Hi, we're out on our range today and no, you haven't won a prize. Today we're talking about my top five firearms for SHTF or WROL or Tiatwaki. It's been done to death, but people keep asking me about it, so here we are. And first and foremost, this is a subject I could talk about all day. So we're going to make two versions of today's presentation a long version, and a short version, which you are watching now. Please keep that in mind before making any commentary telling me about all the things I neglected to discuss. And what I am going to discuss are some caveats and disclaimers, then what terms like Tiatwaki mean and what they mean to me, the criteria that I use to select my list of firearms, and then we'll show the firearms. But if you want to make the short version really short, I invite you to fast forward to the part where you see me standing next to a sign that reads top five. Okay, if you're still here, some disclaimers. Number one, these are my opinions. Different people have different opinions, and today we're talking about mine. Secondly, when I do top five firearms for this or that, I usually put in the disclaimer that these are not recommendations, these are just the firearms that work for me. Today is no exception. However, I am going to be making some recommendations, some things that I think you should do, or at least that you should think about. And I'll try to make the separation between what works best for me and the recommendations I'm making. I'll try to make that very clear. Now, the third thing is that I absolutely recommend that everyone should have a three-day survival pack. But I am in no way encouraging people to be doomsday preppers, nor am I discouraging that activity. I'm saying that if you've already decided that ramping up for doomsday is what you need to do, then today's presentation will have some information that you may find useful. Okay, with that, what do those acronyms mean and what do they mean to me? SHTF, self-explanatory. W-R-O-L, without rule of law. A lot of people get focused in on that. I like to think that that's going to be part of a bigger picture. The bigger picture being Tiatwaki. T-E-O-T-W-A-W-K-I. It means the end of the world as we know it. Now, some people have all kinds of ideas about economic collapse and social unrest and an asteroid hitting the planet, and the list goes on ad nauseum. For me, I'd like to take a bigger picture approach. All of those things people think of will have their own unique problems, but what they have in common is they put you in a situation where you have no services. No working fire department, no working police department, hence WROL. No gas stations, no grocery stores, no pharmacy, no hospital, no EMS. Whatever it is that you need, you're going to have to get before this occurs. Whatever it is you need to do, you're going to have to do for yourself. And in a situation like that, you'll have WROL. Criminals will be operating unchecked. And in a situation where essential things like potable water and food are going to be very difficult to obtain. People who previously have not been criminals may very well resort to burglary and or robbery and or murder to get what they think they need to survive and they may try to victimize you. And the way you're going to have to deal with that is you need a well thought out and flexible plan and part of that plan has to be firearms. Now my criteria for selecting the firearms on my list are seven things. And remember, this is the short version. So if some of these don't make a lot of sense to you before you shake your head and tell me how bad and wrong I am, you might want to watch the long version for a more in-depth explanation. Okay, number one, subsistence hunting. That's going to be part of what some people do, but I really think that for the vast majority of us, that's going to be a very small and non-existent part of what's going on. Second, foraging. You're out searching through abandoned buildings to find ammo or you're bartering. Some self-appointed experts on this topic will think that that's a very big part of what you're going to be doing. I think it's going to be a very small part of what you're doing. Third, no replacement for shot placement. You need firearms that you can operate safely and correctly and that you can shoot accurately. Four, space and weight concerns. Depending on who you are and where you are and what you're doing and what happens, sheltering in place might be the best idea, evacuating might be the best idea. But whatever is going on, your plan should include 
the possibility that you may have to evacuate and you may have to evacuate on foot. Hence, you need firearms that are relatively light, ammunition that's relatively light, and preferably small enough to fit in the finite space of a pack. Number five, the budget. Number six, your local laws. More on that in a minute. And number seven, your primary use for firearms is going to be self-defense. And this is going to be very different from the self-defense scenarios we talk about in our daily life. You don't have to hold out for a few minutes till the police arrive. You have to hold out until it's over. And in situations like this, it is my opinion that you will virtually always be significantly outnumbered. You have to keep that in mind. Okay, so with those seven things, let's take a look at some firearms. And here's where you want to stop fast forwarding because we are now at the top five. Now, please keep five things in mind. One, these are my opinions. Two, there are some restrictions as to what magazines I'm allowed to show you in this format. Three, in the interest of brevity, I want to do this all at once, so you're going to have to put up with my Shatner-esque pauses and transposing syllables and things like that. Four, remember the criteria that we discussed. And five, my top five list won't be in any particular order. Okay, with that, first on the list, some kind of carbine, and it's got to be mid-range caliber, semi-auto, detachable box magazines with higher capacity magazines. Lots of firearms available with 30-shot magazines. That's really good. 20s are okay. I'm going to say dead minimum 15. Now, if you live in a jurisdiction that restricts you to 10-shot magazines, more on that in a few minutes. But my recommendation is dead minimum 15 shot capacity. Now one rifle that I like to display because I like the classics and I like to show off this rifle is an M1 carbine. Caliber 30 US carbine. This one has a 15 shot magazine. Higher capacity magazines are available. The ammunition, even though it's a lot smaller than 5.56 ammo, is virtually identical in weight. And People who have hunted deer with this caliber all tell me that at reasonable ranges, it's very effective. Downsides of this, many people will say that it isn't a good choice because caliber 30 US carbine isn't so common anymore. And that's a valid point, but remember, my opinion is that foraging isn't going to be such a big part of what you're doing. There's also a thought process that some people have that having a carbine and a pistol of the same caliber might be a good idea. Okay, here's my Beretta CX-4 Storm, caliber 9x19, and uses the same magazines as the Beretta 92FS pistol. That can be a big plus, using the same magazines, loading from the same mag pouch. And 9x19, remember out of the carbine, you're going to get more velocity. And I'm going to say that for a lot of situations, that is going to be adequate power. The one recommendation I would make is, if you're going to go with a carbine and a pistol that are the same caliber, if at all possible, get a setup where both firearms can use the same magazines. Now, other choices. Here's the Ruger LC carbine, caliber 5.7 by 28 with 20 shot magazines. Matches up with the Ruger 5.7 pistol, 5.7 by 28 with the same 20 shot magazines. And the list of carbines and pistols that match not just caliber, but magazines goes on and on. And there's a lot of good ones out there. But in this number one place of a carbine, what is my personal choice? Something that won't surprise anybody. An AR platform. I don't even need to go into the reasons why I would pick such a thing. However, there's one unique thing about a Tiatwaki situation. If you've seen much of my work, you know that my main go-to AR platform is an A1. Right now I'm showing you an A2, and there is a reason for this. The A1 has a 1 in 12 twist rifling, and that's really good for stabilizing 55 grain projectiles which are the most common ones on the market. 
The A2 has a 1 in 7 twist, which will stabilize the 55 grain projectiles, but it will also stabilize the green tip 62 grain steel core penetrator ammunition that the military is using. Now, I know I've mentioned that I'm of the opinion that foraging isn't going to be a really big part, but it might be some part. And I'm going to use a term, transitional period, and I'll discuss that at length in the long version. But you have whatever's going on, and between crisis starting and complete chaos, you have this transitional period where the government is trying to keep control of things, and it goes downhill and they just can't. In that period, the military might be all over the place, and when they realize they can't keep track or control of anything and they have to evacuate, they might leave behind a lot of magazines and ammunition that you can forage. An A2 platform with its 1 and 7 twist will fit that need. Okay, now, second on my list is a good handgun. When it comes to handguns, remember the criterion that you have to hit what you're shooting at? There are some people that if you give them an old school revolver like the Smith & Wesson Model 15, they'll hold a group like so. Give them a Glock or some other kind of auto loader like the SIG M17, their group goes from this to about like this. Okay, magazine capacity and high firepower are important, but not as important as hitting what you're shooting at. And if you're one of those people, then you got to go with what allows you to shoot accurately. But most of us are in the category that, although there are handguns that I can shoot better than others, I'm going to do okay with most handguns. So the handgun that I'm going to want is auto-loading, detachable box magazines that are fairly high-capacity magazines. I'm going to say, here's my recommendation, 15 or greater. If you live in a jurisdiction that restricts you to 10-shot magazines, I'm going to say that's not the end of the world, but if at all possible, 15 or greater. Now, here's where I have to expand on what I said earlier about following your local laws. Why would you worry about local laws when you're in a WROL situation? Because whatever it is you think might happen, might happen next month. It might happen 20 years from now. It might never happen. But between now and whenever it happens, you've got to have your stuff readily available. And so over the next 20 years while you're waiting for that crisis to occur, your chances of getting into a legal jackpot because you're in possession of some illegal firearm or illegal magazine or illegal ammunition are far greater than your chances of needing that ammunition in a crisis. Follow your local laws. Oh, and side note, that ridiculous law that was passed in the state in which I reside has been nullified by a court, so I'm back to carrying my Beretta with the 15-shot magazines. Which brings me to, in the category of a good handgun, my personal choice, my Beretta 92FS, or SIG M17. Both are high quality firearms, both are firearms with which I'm familiar. 9mm is, in my opinion, a really good balance between powerful enough to do what you want it to do and ammunition that's light and compact. Both have high capacity magazines, and in the same concept as the A2 platform, in that transitional period, these firearms will have the same magazines and ammunition that the military is using. Okay, number three on my list. Remember I talked about you may have to evacuate on foot? Well, for some people, you can put on your 70-pound ruck and off you go. Other people might not be that young or in that good a condition. So weight becomes very important. And with that in mind, also considering the budget, an auto-loading 22 rifle. Preferably one that utilizes detachable box magazines. There's many good ones on the market, but my choice, the Ruger 1022. And specifically, the 1022 takedown. If I have to put it into some kind of bag or pack, I can. And the 1022 has readily available high capacity magazines. Now, if I were to make a recommendation, if you reside in a jurisdiction that limits you to 10 shot magazines, when it comes to a 22 rifle, 
check the fine print on that regulation. Quite often they make an exception for 22 rifles that have permanently attached tube magazines. And if that's the case and you can have a 22 rifle that can hold more than 10 if it's a permanently attached tube, then put some thought into watching our presentation on speed loaders for tube magazines and getting a rifle like the Marlin Model 60. Because even though it's a tube, it's a 15 shot tube. And I'm of the opinion that those extra five rounds before you need to reload will often trump having to reload multiple times with 10 shot magazines. Now, to go with the 22 rifle is going to be a 22 pistol. Again, if you can hit what you're shooting at, an auto loader with detachable box magazines. Now this is a Ruger Mark III, there's a Ruger Mark IV, there's a whole bunch of 22 pistols that fit this same niche. I like this one because it's readily available. I like the way it fits my hand. I can shoot it accurately. A lot of these will come with 10 shot magazines and that's really common with auto loading pistols in 22 caliber. And when it comes to a pistol, 10 I'm going to say is sufficient, especially when you don't have much choice. Now here's a recommendation that I'm going to make. If you get an auto loading pistol and caliber 22 long rifle, it's very common that it'll come with two magazines. The recommendation is buy more magazines. I'm not saying you got to get crazy and have 20 magazines, but when we're talking about this subject, more magazines is better. Now, What's my choice in this category? Again, something that won't surprise anybody. The Beretta M922. I consider it to be a very high quality pistol. Its disassembly, reassembly, and manual of arms is identical to the Beretta 92FS. And it's a 22 long rifle with a 15 shot magazine. In this case, I consider that a big advantage. Okay. Now there's another category on my list that a lot of people will think is unnecessary and I don't want to go into the long version of why I think it's a good idea, but I think it is. And that is a genuine pocket pistol, something that is really compact. Now I don't mean compact in the sense of trading out your Glock 17 for a Glock 19 that's smaller and that it has a barrel that's a half inch shorter and a magazine that holds a couple of rounds less. That's not what I'm talking about. I mean a genuinely small handgun like this Ruger LCP. Something that you can put in a pocket. Now the very short version of the explanation is you may end up going through some place where you don't want your firearm to show, you're concerned about being searched, in cases like that, probably won't get searched. And even if you do, depending on where you hide the gun, might hide it, especially ladies, depending on who you are, you might have places you can hide a really small gun. Now there's a lot of good pocket guns out there. This Smith & Wesson Model 36 double action revolver, five shot cylinder caliber 38 special. This is one of my top five handguns for daily life. Now we're talking about a totally different situation. So rather than carry this, I'm going to switch to something that instead of having three calibers, 5.56 five, NATO, 9x19, and 38 Special, I'm going to want my pocket gun to be the same caliber as my full-sized handgun. So I'm going to switch out to this Ruger LCR double action revolver with a five shot cylinder in caliber 9x19. Now when you look at this and the size of its grip, it might be really just about at the limit of what I'd call a pocket gun, but having it the same caliber as my full sized handgun is in this case a big plus. Now, a really good choice, the SIG 365. A recommendation is if you get one of these, get the one with the manual safety. This can have a 10 or a 12 shot magazine and it's caliber nine by 19. Again, depending on who you are and how you dress, this may or may not be a real pocket gun. Really popular small handgun. LCP or LCP2 and caliber 380 ACP. 
But again, in this situation, I don't want to carry a third caliber. So if I'm carrying the 1022 Ruger LCP2 in caliber 22 long rifle. Logistics is going to be something that's really important. And so to me, reducing the number of calibers I carry, not increasing them, is a good choice. Now, some people will say things about having more firearms in different calibers will allow you to forage more. Okay, we'll discuss that in greater detail in the long version. But again, remember, some people think foraging is a big part of what's going to happen. I'm going to say it's a smaller part, maybe a very small part depending on who you are, where you are, and what happens. But either way, that's my top five list. And for greater detail, watch the longer version. So as always, don't try this at home on what you call a professional, and thanks for watching the top five list.